Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. We are continuing from that last video where we were planning a flight between Edinburgh and London Heathrow and this Fly UK Boeing 737-800 on the VATSIM network. We've pre-filed the flight, we've logged into the network and we need our clearance. Make sure you've got everything set up as, uh, as you see fit and as is required for the aircraft that you might be operating and then you want to think about getting your clearance. There's a really useful tool called VATSIM Radio that you can download and you can use inside the SIM. And this is a one-click solution to changing different um, controllers throughout your journey. You can just click it and it will automatically change all the frequencies in the aircraft. It's really handy and it's free to use and I'll link it in the description. But if you're doing it the old school way then you need all the frequencies. So ground at Edinburgh is 121.750. We're going to tune to him because top down, ground also operates as delivery at some airports. And then we have Edinburgh Tower, 1187. That is tower, and we need to speak to them as well when we get to the runway. So let's make things easy. Let's pre-tune it ready. Now we're going to need our pen and paper. So when we've tuned in and we're ready to transmit, we are going to give the controller a number of pieces of information. So firstly, we're going to press that transmit button and we're going to say Edinburgh Ground, whatever the call sign of that controller might be. Today it's Edinburgh Ground who is going to be giving our clearance. We need the ATIS information. And for that, we can click the tab in vPilot down the bottom here and you can find that airport information. You can also tune the frequency 131.35 in this case for Edinburgh and it will then give us it via the radio so we'll get that audio message of the ATIS information but uh, sometimes it's easier just to get it in text and write it down. So we can see what information Sierra and we can see the Q&H is 9089. Let's write that down and runway in use is 24. We're expecting the Go Sam 1 Charlie departure. That's what we've got pre filed. If it changes, we just need to change it inside our FMC. The controller will update it in our actual flight plan. But it may well be that we've pre filed an incorrect departure and therefore we will be given a new one by the controller. So uh, do check before you file. But even if it's right, some things change and you might have a new one given to you. But we're going to give them our call sign, our stand number, our aircraft type, and the ATIS information. And then we're going to ask for IFR clearance for our flight to London Heathrow. Tower shuttle 9 Bravo request for us to start from stand to Alpha. Always grab a pen and paper. Once we've asked for clearance, we're going to be given our departure routing. We might get the runway in use. And we're going to be given a squawk code. We need to write that down, put that into the transponder box. And if we get a Q&H, we have to read that back. It's a mandatory read-back item. So if the controller tells us Q&H, Niner, eight, Niner, hectopascals, we need to read that back verbatim. Let's find out what we get. Edinburgh Ground, good afternoon, Skyways. 146, Boeing 737-800 on stand 20 with information Sierra on board. Request IFR clearance to London Heathrow, please. Skies 146, clear to London Heathrow, go Sam 1, Charlie departs to the Swark 4444. Clear to London Heathrow, go Sam 1, Charlie departure, Squawk 4444, Skyways 146. Skyways 146, you're correct. Okay, so that's our clearance. He's told us read back correct, and therefore we know. 
at our departure routing that go San Juan Charlie is correct in our FMC and therefore runway 24 is correct as well. He's told us squawk 4444. So we need to make sure that's set in the transponder box before we push back. Easy three six Tango Quebec. Uh, thank you. Clear to Gatwick. Go Sam one Charlie departure. And then we're going to get ready for our flight. So go ahead, finish all your preparations in your aircraft, and get ready for pushback. One thing to bear in mind is your constraints along the departure routing. So the Go Sam 1 Charlie for us initially is straight out to the Edinburgh NDB. We can tune that if we want to, 368 ADF1. There's a constraint here between 2,300 feet and 6,000 feet. If we follow it along, we can see the ceiling is 6,000 up to 14 DME from ITH. And then Go Sam again, constraint of 6,000 feet. So that is our departure ceiling for today. Therefore in our MCP panel when we activate VNAV we have to set our altitude at 6,000 feet and not above. We cannot go above that unless air traffic control tell us that we can. If we get told in the climb, climb now flight level 120, we can scroll all the way up to 120 in the uh, altitude MCP panel and then we're going to press altitude intervention in the 737 at least or open climb in an Airbus to get us to go through the constraints inside our FMS, allow us to basically climb through. If you're in a Boeing, you might have to press altitude intervention, Edward the three or four constraints if you've got a few. Just for five minutes, um, and I'll be back on ready for taxi. But if you get given Sorry. climb now flight level and then a higher altitude than what the maximum constraint altitude is in the charts then you can climb above it if you don't you can't okay so we're ready to go we've got our transponder squawk code all set as well and we've checked all the data inside our fms to make sure that our routing is correct our constraints are correct as well and also um, we've got all of our speeds set up correctly too And with everything ready, we're going to ask the ground controller for pushback. Again, VATSIM's top down, so if we only have tower online, we might speak to tower only. And he will control what would be delivery and ground and tower at the same time. So we're going to ask for pushback. We're at stand 2-0. We're going to be given... Push back facing north because of our location here at Edinburgh. Stand 2 0. We're in a bit of a cul de sac and we want to basically face the nose north towards the runway. But if we get given a different compass direction, we need to make sure that we've prepared for that and that we are able to do it as well. So if you've got something like GSX, you can have custom profiles for each airport that will give you really accurate pushback procedures based on what the controller wants and what they have in real life. So let's prepare for pushback. Time to departures minus one minute. We'll have Menzies push us back in GSX. Park break is on. Let's get rid of the chocks. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. If you're using something like GSX, it can take a while to get ready for pushback, so give it a minute before you push. Get GSX ready. And as that dispatcher starts to walk underneath the nose wheel to sort out the ground pin, then ask for pushback clearance. Ground, Skyways 146, stand 20, fully ready, request push and start. Skyways 146, stand 20, push up through face west. Push proof face west, Skyways 146. Okay, so he's given us face west, which will be nose right. Looking at the compass here, I said north when we were talking about it and discussing the point, but uh, yeah, it's more west on the compass. And we're going to make sure our anti collision lights are on. 
and then follow the instructions for whatever pushback tool you are using uh, and then get the engine started and ready to go. If you're in the States, really useful point here, if you're in America, you're flying around in the US, you may be given during your departure clearance um, the words expect flight level 320 10 minutes after departure and that's then basically saying um, fly to the SID and you're going to be given further climb up to cruise within 10 minutes of taking off and again if you've got a pen and paper just scribble everything down nice and quick so it keeps things easy and you can recall it now one of the really important things on the network is the use of charts. You must use the accurate charts or the most up to date charts for the airport you're flying into and out of, otherwise it can cause A, you a great deal of problems, but B, be a little bit of a headache for the controllers as well. Here at Edinburgh, the reason why we mentioned it's great for a starting place if you're new to the network is because it's got one runway and only a handful of departures here. You can see on the left hand side of the Navigraph screen there's uh, five tabs. Nice and easy and uh, a lot of them aren't necessarily relevant so you'll only have the option of one or two if you're flying say south to Heathrow. But also it's a small airport which makes it easy for you to get all your procedures done and correct and then get confident on the network too always use charts whether they're these which are Navigraph the best you can get or if you're using something like ChartFox which finds all of the publicly available charts for airports around the world so they may not always be accurate or the most up-to-date something to bear in mind there with your taxi instructions write it down again with your pen and paper we're going to ask for taxi now write down the instructions given to us and then follow it on the charts as you taxi. Skyways 146, request taxi. Skyways 146, taxi via Golf Lima Hold Short Alpha, expect runway 24. Taxi, Golf Lima Hold Short Alpha, expect runway 24, Skyways 146. And read it back verbatim like that. In this instance, it's a bit of a conditional. So we'll keep the charts up because we've been told Taxi Golf, Lima, hold short Alpha. So we're going to take a little right turn coming up, following Golf. We're going to go left onto Lima and then we're going to hold at that stop bar just there on the charts at Lima because we are giving way basically to other aeroplanes. It's really important we do that. And we follow all those instructions because otherwise it's not only unfair on everyone else on the network, but it's also um, quite problematic as well. And much less immersive too. Another rule, if you're taxiing along and you find yourself getting lost, that's fine. Just stop where you are and then ask for progressive taxi instructions. So if I was lost now, I would stop, I'd press the brakes, hold it on the brakes or set the parking brake and I would say Skyways 146 request progressive taxi. And that is me telling the controller that I need them to help guide me to wherever they need me to go. So they would say take the next left onto Lima. Skyways 146 off to the British Airways Airbus. <clears throat> A320 passes left to right on Alpha. Taxi holding point Delta 1 runway 24 via Alpha and Delta. So this is a conditional taxi, let's read it back. Off to the British Airways uh, Airbus A320 passes in front, uh, left to right, continue taxi, uh, hold point Delta 1 runway 24 via Alpha and Delta, Skyways 146. Lima That's him. And golf and give way to the We're giving way to him. Just turning onto Alpha now. But because he's clear, we can keep our momentum Alpha going. We're not we'll holding to short anymore. Left, We've been given a conditional taxi up. behind him to the hold point for runway 24. Listen to everything going on as well around you. There's other aircraft as well flying around on the network at the moment. Edinburgh is uh, nice and busy. It's a really good way to start on the network because it's a simple airport with one runway 
but there's a lot of traffic flying in and out as well. So you, you immerse yourself very quickly into uh, the rules of giving way and things like that. He over That guy over there has been told to give way to me. And we're going to follow that British Airways aircraft all the way to the hold point. As we get towards that hold point, we will be handed over to the tower controller. And this is where it gets really important. So go through all your pre takeoff checks as required. We can see tower has now gone offline. So we won't be handed over to him anymore, but we have got Scottish centre online. 135525. So let's get that frequency tuned in ready. 135525. Member of the contact control now 135525. Goodbye. 135, that's 1325. Thank you. Uh, that's him. Nine, brother. So fine, brother. It's going to be uh, 135525. So 146, contact control 135525. Goodbye. Contact Scottish Control 135, decimal 525, for Scottish 146, bye bye. Scottish 146. So the aircraft in front of us gets the hint for us, basically. They've been told to go to Scottish Control. Therefore, we know that we're going to be told to do the same. So we can pre tune that ready. It gives us one less thing to do. Always think one frequency ahead of the one you're on and that helps with the workload managing complex airliners in a sim just on your own and as we mentioned before in the flight planning tutorial it's a British Airways aircraft but it's flying a domestic route so his call sign is shuttle Scottish Patrol shuttle 89 Bravo after Delta 3 Edinburgh at runway 24 ready for departure shuttle 9 Bravo Roger line of weight runway 24 Line of white, we're with T4, thank you, uh, shot 9 Bravo. Easy 4 5, Charlie Victor, leave Rotev on a heading of 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Run 817, Dublin's a flying Unicorn, 1228, goodbye. Mm Easy 831, uniform descent, final point, 0, free speed. 80 on speed is mine, uh, 831, uniform. Under 266, turn left, heading 330 degrees. Uh, 330, Lufthansa 226. Short line, Bravo, quick take, couple of 2-4, the winds are 0, 7, So he's really busy. Five. We're waiting for a natural gap. We're not going to just go straight in and go. Boom, I'm here, hello, uh, I'm ready for departure. That British Airways aircraft is being cleared for takeoff. We'll let him reply, then we will find a gap for us to say we're ready. Hey, boom, uh, Scottish Control, Skywars 146 on Delta, ready for departure. After the British Airways A320, um, line up and wait behind Skywars 146. Another conditional. So he's been cleared to take off. We've been cleared to actually go onto the runway and line up behind him. That's not a clearance to take off. It's just a clearance to line up. He's disappeared into the pea soup. And we are lining up. Remember, we've only been told line up and wait. So we're going to line up on the centre line. And we're going to wait for that takeoff clearance. So remember, we've only been told line up and wait. So we are cleared as far as this. We're not allowed to go any further until we're cleared by the controller for takeoff. So we've been told line up and wait. Now we're waiting for takeoff clearance. 6,000, uh, shuttle 9, brother. Guys, 146, clear takeoff, runway 24, the winds are 0705 Clear for takeoff, runway 24, Skyways 146. There we go, that's our takeoff clearance. Fly heading 220 degrees, uh, shuttle uh, 9, brother. Stingray 1, report passing altitude. 
Tango 1, back to turn left, heading 150 degrees. And away we go. After departure, we will tell him we're airborne, passing 2,000 feet or something like that. But again, it's not required in a lot of airports around the world. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And we're off to Heathrow. Hope you found the video useful. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and share your comments down below. And uh, check out all of my other videos and my upcoming live streams. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you very soon. Take care.